Hi there, welcome to another In The Labs project with me, Ollie. I'm going to show you how to make this phone lockbox today. So I'm just going to um, show you where my inspiration for this project came from. So a lot of my inspiration came from Todd's, Todd's lamp project. I thought that the way he used the threads to make the joints for the lamp was really creative and a really good use of the thread mill and toolpath. I then created this, which was just a small sample, just so I could learn about the thread mill and toolpath and how the tool actually worked. So the project that I'm actually going to make is taking these smaller screws and making a much bigger screw. So let me show you how I did it. So um, I put a board together on the inspiration for my phone lockbox project. So there's obviously quite a lot of things online that you can look at. Um, so that was the original idea. And then I kind of took the concept from it being a box to a cylinder. Um, and then we're going to stack up um, the different bits of material. So um, here's um, my test cut that I did. So I learned quite a lot from doing this. Um, basically one of the issues that I found was I didn't pocket it down far enough into the thread. So then the um, thread can't actually catch because the pocket isn't far enough down. So it's blocking it from going in. Um, so yeah. With all the problems that I've come across with the test part, I'm going to talk to our lead developer that created this feature to get to the bottom of why it didn't work and things I can do better next time. Um, basically, I'm looking at doing an internal thread but pocketing out um, some square corners in that. So basically my cylinder has more space to put phones and stuff into. Can you right. see um, any problem with that, um, where the, the threads are? Um, I can't really see any. Um, the only thing um, potentially would be, uh, so, so there's no problem with just having gaps in the thread itself. Um, yeah. There's obviously enough thread engaging that it would still uh, go down smoothly. Uh, with cutting out the pockets, uh, potentially it could chip away a bit of a, a thread or or and knock a bit of a thread upwards, perhaps. But as long as all the thread grooves are clear, um, there shouldn't be any um, problem uh, with having the thread uh, fit tightly. Have you got any tips or tricks or any hidden parts of the feature that you'd like to discuss? Um, I don't really have any hidden parts of the feature as such, but there are, there are I forget, a few uh, general tips that are probably worth keeping in mind. So it's always good to, to if you can, do to do a test um, fit so you can see how well things fit together. Um, obviously, if you cut one part first, like like the bolt, uh, for instance, you could then, with the internal part still on the machine, you could test that fit. And if it was a bit tight and you needed some extra tolerance, you could then recut that internal part uh, still in situ uh, very easily with a slightly bigger tolerance to make it fit better. Uh, I'd also say check the 2D solid preview, um, particularly when doing uh, the external threads because the tool needs a, a fair bit of room to manoeuvre around the stand-up area and this lets you see where that tool uh, would go to so you can make sure your pocket uh, for that is big enough. Um, the other thing I would mention is that um, uh, sometimes people think that uh, like a one-inch thread is a thread that goes in a one-inch hole um, but that's not the case because the, uh, the thread diameter actually includes, includes the subsurface um, distance. So the, the pocket, the amount you would have to pocket out is actually smaller than the thread um, diameter itself. Um, there is a, a useful function on, on the form. Uh, there's a create circles for inner threads button. And if you click this, it will give you the exact diameter of the hole you have to pocket out. Uh, for those threads to go in, uh, so that's worth using. Um, finally, I would just say to make use of the good resources we have. There are, we've got some video tutorials and uh, some guides that have got some really good information, uh, as well as the forum where there've been some good threads on threads on thread. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's been some uh, good threads that, and, and people are always uh, uh, able to answer questions there. So that's another good resource that uh, would be good to use. Yeah, brilliant. All right, yeah. Cheers for okay. um, answering all those questions and yeah, thanks no for all your help. Cool. That was really helpful and um, some really good tips from Stuart.
I'm now going to go into the software and start creating the project. So I've just opened up the software and I've opened up the file that you'll get when you download the project from your VNCO account. So I've got the three main sheets that I'll be using for cutting and these are my sheets that I'll use for my toolpaths as well. And then I've also got a design sheet. So let's first of all look at the design sheet. So this was the basis of where I started in the software. So I've basically gone through and drawn out the rough vectors that I need for each part of the project. And then I've also done a side on view of these as well, just to get the idea clear in my head and how it's all going to fit together and what I need for each part of the project. This is a really helpful way of visualizing it as well. So if we go up here, I basically just drawn the circles, the dowel holes and the square box that I'll need for the middle part and also the bottom and the thread part of the project. These are the vectors that I'll use throughout those parts of the project. I've then done vectors as well for the lid, so for the finger holes to help unscrewing and screwing the lid on. I've done some V carving as well, um, or vectors for the V carving. And then I've also done the bottom vectors here. Just very quickly going to show you how I drew the vectors, some of the vectors on this sheet. There's a lot of tutorials on, on our website within the tutorial browser of how to draw vectors and stuff like that. So here I'm just drawing out the circles to create the vectors in the top left hand corner. Um, just drawing the dowel holes at the moment. And then I'll just draw the square which we're going to cut out. This actually enables the project to hold more phones within the lockbox or more stuff within it. That's the reason why I've done this square. Just snipping that out. And then we're just going to rotate and then the vector should look the same as the vectors in the top left hand corner. I'm now going to show you how I created the vectors for the lid. Mainly just the finger holes that I'm going to cut out with a ball nose to make them smooth. So here I'm just drawing the oval, snipping it out. Uh, put the uh, center point into the middle of the circle of which I want to want a circular copy round. Cut out any vectors that I don't need. And then that's the lid all done. So that's the basis of most of the vectors on this sheet. So now that I've gone through the design sheet, it's time to look at the lid and bottom sheet. On this sheet, we will be cutting the bottom, the lid and the thread for the project. As this project is focused on thread milling and on this sheet, we are cutting the thread and the screw for the project. I feel like it is better to separate this out into a separate file so that I can go through in detail the thread milling toolpath and how you'd make a thread and a screw for this project. So here's the file that I've set up to illustrate the thread milling toolpath. I just wanted to quickly go over um, this quick diagram just to make it clear, a good visual representation of what we're aiming to do with the thread milling toolpath. So we've got the external thread here, which will be the screw, and then we've got the internal thread as well, which we'll be screwing into. A few things to point out on the external thread is this gap here. So this is where when we're machining it, we're going to be machining down the thread. And then because of the, the way that the tool is designed, we're going to have a gap at the bottom where it cannot reach that part with, it, with the teeth of the tool that's making the thread. So we're going to have a little bit of an allowance here where we're not going to actually have any threads. So if we wanted the thread, the external thread, to sit snug with the internal thread, this means that we're going to need to pocket out a little bit extra material on the, the top of the thread um, with a slightly bigger allowance to allow the screw to fit snug into it. That is because of this gap here. A few things to point out with the internal thread as well is I've actually pocketed out some excess material. So this is material that we're not going to need um, because of the thread's um, top part. So basically we're just taking away 
away any threads or any material which we do not need on the internal thread. Now that I've gone through this diagram, I just wanted to point out that if you wanted to understand more about the thread milling tool and exactly how it works, we've got plenty of tutorials on our website and videos like you can see here. So now that I've covered that, it's time to start looking at the actual vectors that we'll need for creating the threads. So now I'm going to start talking you through the vectors that we need for actually creating the first internal thread. So basically, probably the one of the most important vectors is this one. So this is a circle illustrating the, di the diameter of the, the internal and the external thread which you want to create. So I've chosen 120 millimeters here, but you could choose whichever size thread you want. So if we just go into the thread milling toolpath form, you can see that I've entered the diameter here. This is very important to get it to have the same value for the internal and the external thread. So moving on to this vector inside, basically this vector is created by selecting your diameter vector and then clicking this button. This will then create a vector which we will then use when we're actually creating the thread milling toolpath. This um, option is only available when you're doing the internal thread and not the external thread. So moving on to the, these vectors. So basically this one is just going to be our cutout or our profile vector. So it's basically the diameter what we want the cylinder to be or your thread. This could be a box or it could be any shape really. This is purely just a profile vector. And then we've also got this one. As I'm pocketing out some material, I wanted to make it slightly bigger than our profile cut just so we have a smooth edge. So if we start going through the toolpaths, so first of all, we've got the pocket. So this is basically getting rid of any excess material which we do not need. So if we go over and show our diagrams from earlier. So this pocket is basically this part of our diagram which we drew earlier. So this is the excess material which we do not need. So if we just preview that. This is just a basically a pocket toolpath. So we're just going down the depth that we want to cut out with a quarter inch M ML, a fairly straightforward pocket. Okay, so now we're going to go on to our internal thread pocket. So we're using the vector that we've created in the thread mill and toolpath form. So we're going to be using this one and we're going to be basically cutting out the, the center of where our tool is actually going to go. This is because the thread milling tool cannot actually remove all of this material. So we need to pocket it out before we actually use the thread milling tool. So if you go ahead and calculate that, preview the visible toolpath. So as you can see, I've gone all the way through. We just pocketed out all the excess material, which we don't, don't need. So now on to the, the internal thread uh, toolpath. So basically the material, we've done the other toolpaths to make the material ready for this toolpath. So if we just quickly go through it. So I'm going to start a depth of 6mm. That's because we've taken the 6mm off, um, off the material, which we don't need max depth of 40 to give us a thread length of 30. I've selected the thread milling tool. If we go into our tool database, I basically entered up, entered all of the uh, parameters that I need. So you can most often get this from when you actually buy the tool, the tool manufacturer will give you all of these settings. You'll just need to look it up online and then check that they're correct for your machine. So the feeds and speeds are really important and you should definitely check these. So you can see under the pitch preset, I've selected custom, but you could select um, some of the pre-made presets like the metric ones that we have. But if we keep on going down the form, I'm going to set a pitch of three millimeters. This is because I want 
um, plenty of threads. So you, when you're screwing the the screw in, um, there's plenty of rotations, so that it's going to be secure and tight. Um, we want the diameter of 120, which we talked about earlier. And as it's an internal thread, we don't actually need any um, fit tolerance. So again, select the internal thread. I've gone for right-handed, but obviously you can choose left-handed if you wanted to. And we're going to machine from the top to the bottom of the thread. So if we just calculate this, give you the visible toolpath. Just a quick note that the 3D toolpath preview will not show you any thread marks. This is going to basically go round and create the threads in the, in the material. So that's all the toolpaths that we're going to be doing on this side. So it's time to flip over to the other side of our, our sheet and then hide the vectors that we don't need and then show the vectors for this side. If we just bring up the diagram as well on this sheet. So on this sheet, basically, I'm going to go through uh, the external thread, so the screw. However, I just wanted to quickly go through the last tool paths on the internal thread. So basically, we've got the thread profile. So this is basically this part of the internal thread. So we're just pocketing out the material so that the external thread's going to fit snug. So we're just giving it um, slightly more uh, width, so 121 millimeters instead of 120, just to make sure that it fits in there snug. So I've gone down 10 mil. This should give us plenty of room for this um, allowance as well. If we just calculate that, and then we can preview it. Then you can see where that pocket's gonna get to. So if we actually just do the thread mill profile as well, then that'll be all the tool paths done for the internal thread. So this is just a profile cut, so it's the same vector as we had on the other side, 150 millimeters in diameter. Um, I've added in some 3D tabs just to keep the material secure. So it's worth noting here that one of the reasons as well for doing tabs of this length and thickness is so that we can actually test out the external screw whilst um, it's still on the bed. So we're going to leave the tabs intact while we do this test. And then if we do need to down any further for the pocket or we do need to change anything, to make the external thread fit the internal thread, we can do this at this point because the material will still be on the machine bed. So at this point, if we just move on to the external threads, so I'm just going to go through um, each of these vectors. So if we start with a vector that we've got in the internal and external thread, be this one, so this is the 120 mil diameter circle. Um, we can then move to this one, which is an inside one. This is basically uh, 0 0.508 mm um, in from our 120 mm vector, which is about 0 0.02 inches. This is basically just a an allowance. So if we were going to be doing a pocket inlay, for example, we'd always add a little bit of an allowance just to make sure that it actually fits in the hole and that we've got that tiny bit of allowance so that it does actually fit. So that's why we need to add this vector in. And then our other ones are the 150mm vector, which is basically the cutout for the cylinder. And then I've also got this vector, which is we'll use to pocket out material. So this vector is basically so that we've got enough width between where we're trying to machine and the wall of the material. So the, the space that we've pocketed down will need some space for the thread milling tool to get in and go around. I'll um, show you this in the toolpath preview. So if we start going through the toolpaths, so this first one is a pocket. So we're going down 28 mil. So on the diagram, if you look, this is gonna be 28 mil. So it's basically the depth of the thread that we want with the allowance on the bottom here included. So it's a very basic pocket. So if we just preview that, you see how it pockets out the material. 
And then, as I said, we've then got that gap so the thread milling tool can actually get in there and create the external thread, if that makes sense. So if we go ahead and look at the external thread, so we're using this 120 mil vector. So basically, starting at zero, we're going down the max depth of 28, which we pocketed out. We've got a pitch of three and a diameter of 120 mil, this which will match the internal thread settings. We've then got a fit tolerance of 0.229 millimeters. This is just an extra tolerance, just so that it can fit into the internal thread. Uh, we've got external selector because that's all we're doing. We're going to go right handed. This will need to match your internal thread. So if you do go left handed on an internal thread, you'll need to change it to left handed on your external as well. And then we're going top to bottom. So if we calculate that and then preview it, you can see the tool going in and cutting those threads out. And then the last tool path left to do is the profile cut. So this is just going to cut out the screw. So we've got some tabs on there to keep it secure. So basically, once we've machined both of these parts, I want to um, remove these tabs from the screw to then test fit the screw into the internal thread whilst it's still on the machine, like I talked about earlier. So yeah, that's all the tool paths done. So basically at this point, we've kind of gone through all the thread milling toolpath settings and um, everything you'll need to know. So if we go back into our, our project file, I can carry on from there. So now that I've gone through the thread milling toolpath, it's time to go through the actual toolpaths for the sheets. So if we go across to the toolpaths tab, so the first toolpath that we'll be doing is the pocket toolpath. So this is just the 150 mil diameter circles around each part. We're just going to be pocketing down one millimeter. This is just to get rid of excess material that we don't really need for the, the top, the bottom and the thread part of this project. The next toolpath that we get, we're going to be doing is the chamfer toolpath. So this is basically around the lid and the bottom of the cylinder or lock box just to give it a nicer finish and a nicer edge on both the top and bottom, which will be matching. So if we go ahead and calculate this, preview that. If you're unsure on any of these tool paths, it'd be a great idea to check out our tutorial browser on our website where we have specific tutorials on toolpaths like the chamfer toolpath, pocketing toolpath, v-carving, etc. So the next toolpath we've got is um, the v-carving, the pocket that we did earlier which is a mil and then I'm just going down 0.05 mil just to give it the v-carving that extra depth. So we'll calculate that, preview those toolpaths, all looking good. So the next one I've tool path that I've got to do is the, the cutouts for the finger holes. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm using a quarter inch ball nose for this so that the bottom of the pockets are going to be nice and smooth. So this will be nicer for the for fingers. So we're going down a cut depth of 10 mil. And then, as I said, using a quarter inch ball nose. So if we calculate that, PV visible tool path. Yeah, it's all looking like it should be. So now we've got the smaller pockets. So we're actually going to be using dowel holes and dowels to stack up the middle of the project. This is so that we can align the square and also align all the layers so they're where they should be. So this will really help when we're gluing up and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and calculate the small dowel holes. I'm also using, you might have noticed, an 8th inch end mill. That's so that we can get those smaller holes, whereas if I used a quarter inch end mill, we wouldn't be able to get small enough holes for the dowels. So if we preview that. So the next toolpath we're going to do is actually a toolpath for the thread milling. So this is the pocket for the internal thread, where we're going to pocket out the material so that the, the thread milling tool can actually get inside and cut out the internal thread. 
So we're going to be using start depth of 1 mil and the cut depth of 29. So we calculate that, preview the visible toolpath. Seeing it all looking good and plenty of space for the tool to get in to cut out those threads. So now move on to the thread milling toolpath. So I've been through earlier in the video, I'll just go for it really quickly. So start depth of 1 mil, so that's the pocket that we've pocketed out. We've got a max depth of 28 mil, we've got the pitch of 3 mil, diameter of 120. Because it's an internal toolpath, we don't need any fit tolerance. I have actually created the circle for the other, for the pocketing out. So that's all done, selected internal right-handed thread, and we're going to be machining top to bottom. So if we calculate that and preview it, it's all looking good. So we've now got the box profile. So basically this is where I want to add some more space to the lockbox so you can store more phones and other gadgets inside it. So I'm actually just going to be cutting out the corners of the square to just give it some more room. So we, we're going to be cutting down 30 mil, uh, starting from zero. We're going to go inside and we don't need any tabs or anything because the material has already been cut away. So if you calculate that and preview it. So you can see the extra room that it's going to give inside there. Okay, so we've now got the profiles for the elements on this sheet. So we've got the profile for the bottom, the lid and the thread. For this, we're just going to be cutting down approximately half the material just so when we flip it over we can then profile cut out the rest of the material. I'm also going to add in some tabs to keep the material secure and we're going to be going outside for the vector because it's profile cuts. So if you calculate that, preview the visible toolpath and you can see the, the tabs showing and also that there's still material below it which is what we're expecting to see. The last toolpath to do is the dowel pocket. Because it's a two-sided job, we basically need holes on both sides which we can line up to. I'm only going to be going down 20 mil so that we've got some dowel sticking out. Um, so to put these onto, if we calculate that, preview the visible toolpath, they're all looking good. So that's all the toolpaths done for this side of the sheet. So if we flip over. So just quickly to mention, I'm not going to go through how to copy vectors to the other side of this sheet or, and I'm not going to go through double-sided machining in too much detail. If you do want to learn more about this or you're a bit confused, I'd definitely recommend looking on our website or our YouTube channel on videos on double-sided machining and similar projects that use this, which could be really helpful. We've already got all our vectors set up here. So they're basically copied from our design sheet. So I'm just going to go straight into the toolpaths for this side. So the first thing we want to do is machine the dowel holes onto the machine bed. So this will then allow us to line up dowel holes into these holes and then line up the material so that we can machine on this side and it will line up to the other side. So I'm just going down 20 mil. Uh, so if you calculate that, so now we've got the pocket for the actual bottom of the cylinder. So we're just going to pocket some material out. This is um, just so that we've got the right amount of material left over. So now the thread pocket. So this is basically getting rid of any excess material that we don't want for the thread part. So basic pocket toolpath, going down 22.8 mil. So calculate that. And then preview it. So as you can see, we've actually um, gone all the way through the material. So this pocket just brings that thread through. We've then got the pocket profile. So as I showed you earlier, we need to pocket out some material just so that the thread will shut snug on our lockbox. So we're going to be going down 7.2 mil with the start depth of that pocket which you've just made. So if we preview that toolpath, it's just slightly wider than that and pocketed it down. So 
the next toolpath that we want to do is the pocket for the actual external thread. So we're just going to be our first toolpath for the external thread is just getting rid of any material which we don't don't need. So toolpath after that is basically getting rid of the material in between these two vectors. So that will then leave just the material so that the thread milling tool can go in and cut the thread. Preview that. So we've now got the external thread toolpath. So I'm just going to go quickly go through this form. It should be fairly similar to the one that we had earlier. So start depth of 12, max cut depth of 29 mil, which we've already taken away. We've got a pitch of three. The diameter is 120, so these settings match the internal thread that we made earlier. We've got a bit of a thick tolerance on there, just so that we're we're making sure that it's actually going to fit into the thread and it will go in nicely. Got right-handed as as we've done on the internal thread, and we're machining top to bottom. So if we calculate that and preview the toolpath, see the thread milling tool going in there and cutting out the threads. It's all good. So then we've actually got a pocket for the thread. So basically I didn't want to go all the way through before I needed to. So I've actually done all the thread milling tool paths before doing this pocket because otherwise we would have just had the tabs holding it in place. So that's just a safety thing really. Just preview that one. As you can see we've now got the tabs showing. So you're just hollowing out the bottom part of um, the cylinder now. So we're using a bull nose um, as before with the finger holes. This is so that we have a smooth finish of where it's pocketed away. So if we calculate that, preview the toolpath. And you can see it's all looking as we expect. So we've now got the eighth inch dowel holes, which we need to put in the bottom so that we can stack onto it. So if we calculate that, preview the visible toolpath. Yeah, that's looking good. So now we've basically got the profiles for each of these. So at this point, it's a really good point. So we can detab the screw and then we can actually test out the internal thread. So this is a really good test to make sure it's all working as it should and it fits snug. So we move on to the profile cut at the bottom. So simple profile cut with some tabs. So we're going to be cutting all the way through. So you can see it's gone all the way through with the 3D tabs in the middle holding it in place. We've then got the profile for the in internal thread. So it's going to be going all the way through. Preview this. And then that's holding it in place. And then this last profile cut was just in case we've got any material left over on here um, to get rid of that so that we've cut all the way through. So that's all the toolpaths gone through on this sheet. So it's probably time to focus back on to the middle part. So if I go back to my design sheet, just to show you quickly. The other two sheets that we're going to be looking at, the middle dark and the middle light, are actually these middle parts of the cylinder. So this gives it the height that we need to store phones and stuff like that in it because otherwise it'd just be the bottom of the thread and the lid, so you wouldn't have much storage room inside. So if we just go over to the middle dark sheet to start off with, so basically on this sheet all we're doing is the dowel pocket holes, the middle profile cuts, and the outside profile cuts. So if I just go straight into the toolpath, so I'm just cutting through the material using an 8 inch M mill, the dowel pockets, just view the toolpaths, you can see those there. We've then got the middle profiles with the tabs. So I'm cutting all the way through the material again, inside the vector, and then add in tabs. Calculate that. Preview those toolpaths. And then we've got the outside profiles. So cutting all the way through the material, outside the vector with tabs. Preview that toolpath. And that's all done for this sheet. So then if we go on to the light sheet. 
So the reason for using the light and the dark was to get a contrast in the middle. So the light sheet is very much the same as the dark sheet. So we've got the dowel holes with an 8-inch eight, eight ML. Preview those. Got the middle profiles. And then the outside profiles. So that's all our toolpaths done, so it's time to get into the labs. So that's the first set of toolpaths done. I'm really happy with how they've turned out. The chamfer and the V-carving have come out really well and then the ball nose to cut the finger holes out has turned out really well. So the next toolpaths I'm going to be doing is for the thread milling um, part of the project. So this is the inside thread. So basically our first tool will be an end mill to pocket out the inside of the thread because this tool won't be able to pocket it out. Once the pocket's done, the thread milling tool will then go into the hole and carve out the thread. So it will just go down round, carving out the thread. After that, I'm then gonna cut some dowel holes into this, um, into the bit of wood. That will then allow me to flip it over and then I'll drill into the spoil board to then put the dowels in. That will then make sure that, cause it's a double sided cut, that all the cuts line up and that it's exactly the same, but on the other side. <laughs> So now that we've flipped the material over and screwed it down to the spoil board, we're now ready to do all the cuts on this side. So this will be mostly pocketing out any excess material that we don't need, uh, doing some profile cuts and also doing the 
thread part of the screw that will go into the thread. We're also gonna, once we've done the screw part, we're gonna take that off and then test it while the thread is still in the material so that if we do run into anything, like we need to make the pocket bigger or um, more deep, we can do that whilst it's still on the machine. So we just finished um, machining the screw. I've detabbed it and I've tested it out in the thread cut, which is still on the machine. It fits together really well and it fits snug tight, which is what we were looking for. So that test worked. Um, thanks to Stuart for that great tip. It's a really good one to bear in mind when you're cutting these yourselves. So all that's left to do now is do the profile cutout and the bottom side of the part. So that's all done cutting, time to get this off the machine. The next um, toolpaths we're going to run are just simple profile toolpaths on these two bits of wood to create the middle part of the cylinder with the circles stack up. So I've sanded up all the parts, so all that's left now to do is to glue it all up. Basically what I need to do is line up the holes with the dowels and glue it together. I'm also going to go dark light like this. And then that should stack up to give us the cylinder. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you want to download the files, you can access them via your VNCO account. Cheers for watching and happy making.